Greenwald came out with an excellent article uh, at The Intercept. As Democratic elites reunite with neocons, the party's voters are becoming far more militaristic and pro-war than Republicans. I never thought I would read a headline like that. It's an excellent article. I think our viewers should take a look at it. But we have a historical shift here. Or maybe we don't. Is it just out of spite because Trump has talked about during the campaign and during his presidency about um, uh, uh, withdrawing troops from uh, uh, Syria, uh, Syria, for sure, Afghanistan, um, uh, rethinking the uh, possibility of uh, American troops in Iraq. I mean, uh, th this is something that his base uh, likes. Public opinion polls show it. But because Trump is for it, the Democrats in the, in the liberal media are against it. What's going on here, Marcus? Well, I don't think there's been any shift, and certainly in my lifetime, the, the Democrats have been as pro-war as the Republicans. Let's not forget, in the 1990s, uh, how Bill Clinton, for example, uh, facilitated the arrival of the Mujahideen to Bosnia during the civil war there, and the Mujahideen um, enacted some of the most appalling atrocities of the 20th century against Bosnian Serbs. Let's not forget how Bill Clinton gave the order for NATO to start bombing Serbia for three months. And uh, Mark was talking earlier about how Pompeo was referring to the Bible. Well, um, uh, at the beginning of 1999, Bill Clinton, Peter, was sitting in the Oval Office and he asked God, Shall I bomb Serbia? And guess what God said? Yes. Yeah, I guess so, you know, I guess it, just like George W. Bush was talking to God about yes. in Iraq. That, that's what yes, the other absolutely. phone in the Oval so, Office is for. It's a straight line to God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, absolutely. So in my opinion, the Democrats and the Republicans, when it comes to foreign policy, they are two sides of the same car of the same coin. They have no respect for the United Nations Charter. They have no respect uh, for international law. And I think, um, you know, the Democrats have proven their, um, their commitment to war over the last 20 years. I okay, think well, I mean, I, I want to go back, to, and, we, and we can take a look, our viewers can take a look at the article. The, the, the point is, is that polling data shows that the, the Democrats are more pro-war than Republicans. Though, I suppose, you know, it's to one degree or another, both are interventionist both support American exceptionalism. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, so the numbers show that as of right now, some 49 to 33 percent, the majority of Americans support Trump's withdrawal uh, of U.S. troops from Syria. And the vast majority of that 33 percent is Democrats. Um, and the almost identical, we see very similar numbers with the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Here's the problem. Just a few years uh, ago, when it was Obama campaigning on withdrawing troops uh, from Afghanistan, which he ran on and then actually surged troops into, Democrats were overwhelmingly supporting withdrawing all troops from, from uh, Afghanistan, and Republicans so, were so, against So it. explain, 40 seconds. Partisanship. The, the, the or, explanation or no, 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 is how does, how does Trump, Trump play into this? How does Trump play into this? Uh, because Republican voters as a whole, you know, there's always specifics, support whatever Trump says. When Trump was launching airstrikes into uh, uh, Damascus on the pretext of chemical weapons, Republicans supported that, right? So, but I think there is a long-term shift with the neocons gravitating to control both parties yeah, directly good, now. When point. we have woke Bill Kristol and Robert Kagan supporting Hillary Clinton and so on. And this may not be reversible. This may ha have a, a longer trend than partisanship so, in both So the offices. neocon cancer on the Republican oh, Party is just tr tr uh, migrated to the Democrats. I'm going to jump in here, gentlemen. We're going to go to a short, short break. And after that short break, we'll continue.